In this video, we're going to look at sets and Venn diagrams. So basically, it's looking at pictorial logic. It's taking a picture and using the objects on that to actually describe what's going on with different sets and information. A set is a collection of objects. The objects which are in that set are also called elements. So each piece, it's in there. So if you looked at the example, V is a collection of all vowels in the alphabet, the elements would be a, E, I, O, U. Those would be the elements inside of that set. Set B is a subset of A if every piece or every element of B is inside of A. So if in the example on the bottom, it says V is a collection of all vowels. <coughs> vowels is a subset of the alphabet because all the vowels are inside of the alphabet. However, if we look at two sets that are have nothing in common, they're known as disjoint. So, for example, vowels, A-E-I-O-U, would not be part of the non-vowels category. So you have all the rest of the letters over here. There's, there's not the crossover between those two pieces. So we're going to look at how the government's set up and actually see. This gives you a good example of the information that's looking at it. If you want to follow along in your book, this is also on page 42 and 43. It says, let S be the set of all U.S. senators. R be a set of members from the U.S. House of Representatives, and G be a set of all elected U.S. government officials. So how many elements are in set S? So if you look at just set S, how many U.S. senators are there? There's a hundred of them, two from each state. So that set has a hundred elements inside of it. Other two sets, what are subsets of the others? So now we got to look at the, the two pieces there. We have Senators, uh, representatives, and all elected officials. So senators is a subset of all elected officials because all senators are elected. Therefore, they're all inside of that category. The R, the set of members from the U.S. House of Representatives, are also a subset of all elected U.S. government officials. If you look at the which ones are disjointed, that be the senators in the House of Representatives because there is no senator that's also a House uh, in the House of Representatives and there's a representative that's also a senator. So if we look at these three figures, we have in figure 1-1, one, one, the senators and representatives are disjointed. They're totally separate of the pieces. In figure 1-2, we have Republican senators that are a subset of the total senators. So you could see inside Republican senators and the stuff that's not or that's outside of that would be the Democrat senators. And notice there's no crossover still between that and the representatives. In figure one three, we've got it a little bit different. We've got Democrats in the blue and we've got women in the red. And you have in between those where the overlap is, those are the female Democrats. Now, on the outside part of that, on the women, you have the female Republicans. Obviously, you can't be Republican and be a Democrat. And then you have the male Democrats that are also there. And as you can see, they also have on the outside the male Republicans because of the way they did the crossover. Here's an example. A is 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, and B is 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. If we look at the Venn diagram down the bottom... We have set A is 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Those are all inside the green circle. And then in set B, we have 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. And those are all inside the yellow circle. Notice that there's an overlap of 4, 5, and 6. Those are in both sets. So those are where the actual two circles overlap. Also notice that 1, 9, and 10 isn't part of either set. So those are actually outside of the Venn diagram. Medical tests do not always produce accurate results. Now, in this example, we have patients with hepatitis C and patients who test positive. So you might have actually heard of the whole term of false positive. That's when somebody who gets tested for a medical illness and actually says they have it, even though they really didn't have it. There's also the other case, the false negative, which is where people who actually do have the disease and test negative for it. So we have to actually look at that and break that down. And that's what this diagram that we're about. To... So we have four different poss 
multiple cases. We have true positives who test positive and who have it. False positives, these are people who test positive but do not have hepatitis C. True negatives, people who test negative and don't have it. And false negatives, people who test negative but do have it. So because of that, the two sets do overlap because there it can possibly be both. So if we look at this case right here, this is how our Venn diagram would be set up. People who have hepatitis C is in the blue circle. Patients who tested positive is in the orange circle. And you can see the overlap there would be the true positive, false negative, and false positive. And the true negative people who don't have hepatitis C and who actually do pet um, test negative for it would basically be all the people on the outside edge there. Now, don't take the size of the circles to mean the exact um, situation of how the percentage actually get false negatives and false positives. It's just a pictorial representation or a picture representation of the different cases that could possibly happen. Now here's an example of a double-blind drug test that separated a group of 100 patients into a test group of 50 and a control group of 50. So we have two different groups, the test group and the control group. Now, when we're looking at the groups that we're going to use for the Venn diagram, we have to have some kind of an overlap and some kind of the connection between those two things. So we're going to look at the test group and the patients who actually did improve. It's the entire point of obviously doing a drug test is to actually see people who actually did improve. Now, we have four different cases of those things that could happen. A test group who did improve, so they took the actual drug and they improved. The test group who did not improve, they took the drug but didn't actually show any improvement. The control group who improved, so these are people who didn't take the drug, but based on some other reason, they actually did get better. And the control group who did not improve. These are people who were in the control group, didn't take the drug, and nothing really changed. So if we look at figure 1-7, you can see the breakdown of the two circles there. We have the test group and the improvement group. And the only difference between figure 1-7 and 1-8 is 1-8 is actually putting the numbers in there. So 20% of the people in the test group also did improve. 30% of the people in the test group did not improve. And 10% of the people in the control group actually improved because they weren't part of the actual test group. And that's the part over there. And the rest of the other 40% of the people were in the, or 40 people were in the control group and didn't improve at all. Here's another look at um, Venn diagrams. Now, when we also have to look at how the logic between the two circles gets together and how that actually matters. Now, in these three Venn diagrams down the bottom, figure 1, 9 through 1, 11, we can actually see something going on here. So we have two different things, groups. We have the people who are stopped for speeding and people who get traffic tickets. So the first Venn diagram, 1, 9, states we had a group of people who get traffic tickets and a smaller group of people who were stopped for speeding. We're making the assumption that everybody stopped for speeding gets a traffic ticket. That's why it's no, there's no piece outside of the get the traffic ticket. So if you get stopped for speeding, you're getting a traffic ticket. Now, if we look at 110, it gives us a little bit more information. It just tells us that anybody outside of that stop for speeding circle is getting a ticket, but they're getting it for something other than speeding. Could have been running a red light, reckless driving, a bunch of different issues. But they weren't stopped specifically for speeding at that case. And when we looked at 1-3 and we had, we were talking about converses and all this other stuff, but switching things around, we have to be careful when we're doing that with Venn diagrams. Sometimes the converse isn't true. So if we flipped these two circles and put stop for speeding in the big one and gets traffic ticket in the middle, in this situation here, everybody that stop, everybody gets stopped for speeding to get a traffic ticket. There's no situation where you'd be able to get a traffic ticket and you weren't stopped for speeding. The other situation that occurs here is you have a bunch of people that were stopped for speeding that didn't get a ticket at all. So, so you got to be very careful how you set up the circles and make and when there's one that is a subgroup of another one. Now we're going to look at conjunctions using Venn diagrams. For the conjunction, he is a math major and a music major. So we have math majors and music majors as the two different sets. To say he's both a math major and a music major please, states that he belongs to both sets of information. So if we look at this circle, 
the math major and music major, that means it's only in the interior space, that shaded spark part between the green circle and the blue circle in figure 112. The other situation, a disjunction, means that he could be a, both a math major or a music major. Now, if we look at figure 113 there, that's where that comes into play. It splits up that the shaded area is all three of those because he's a math major or a music major. It's not the middle piece could also happen too in that situation. If anybody's ever watched any of those political dramas and there's a great one on Netflix, The House of Cards, you actually see quite often the people in the House of Representatives and in the U.S. Senate counting votes and actually figuring out where senators or representatives are voting on certain bills and how they're voting. And the press does this as well, especially coming around election time, to decide, well, who are you going to vote for? So they actually look at a lot of these charts and figure out where people are voting. So in this example, we're going to have senators who voted for the farm bill, and senators who voted for the tax bill. So we want to make a Venn diagram with the F&T and shade the region for where he voted for the tax bill, but not the farm bill. Let's look at this one. So this is the first situation over here. This is senators voting for the tax bill, but not the farm bill. So if you notice, the only shading is everything that's not inside of the yellow circle. So you have some people who voted for the tax bill that aren't shaded because they actually did vote for the farm bill. And the second situation in that case, we were looking at, well, what happens if all Southern senators voted for both bills? Now, in that case, we'd actually put another circle and we put it right in the middle there because that's all the Southern senators and they voted for both the farm bill and the tax bill. The other cool thing we can do with Venn diagrams is if we have some information, we can actually use it to figure out other information that we might not know explicitly or have been told explicitly. So in this example, we're given 17 tours travel to Mexico or Costa Rica. Some visit Mexico, some visit Costa Rica, and some visit both. So we have to get some of the information. There. So they tell us that at least 10 or 10 people visited Mexico, but not Costa Rica, and five visited both. We look at the breakdown, that means we have the circle for Mexico, the circle for Costa Rica. We put in the information that we do know. So Mexico alone, but not Costa Rica, is 10. The people that went to both of them was five. Now, we know the total number of people in the entire group was 17. So to find out the other one left over there, well, we have 15 total taken here. That means there has to be two left over. So two people went to Costa Rica, but did not go to Mexico. So the cool thing about that is you could also turn and say that, well, now that we have that number there, how many total people went to Costa Rica? Well, the two in the, just to Costa Rica and five went to both. So that means seven total people went to Costa Rica. Here's another example that we're actually using to count. This is 100 high school students are examined in science and math. And there is the result. So 41 students passed the math exam, but not the science. 19 passed both and eight failed both. So how do we set up our circles? Well, we're going to design the circles to be the students who passed math and the students who passed the science exam. So those would be the two main circles that we're going to have. So the one thing that we have different in this one that we didn't have in the last case was when we were looking at Mexico and Costa Rica, nobody went to, we didn't have a situation where a bunch of people went to neither of those places. But in this case, we do. We have eight people that didn't pass either one of them. So that's actually on the outside of all the circles. So we have 41 that passed math, but not science. 19 that passed both. So to figure out the past science, we actually take all that away from 100. And that's going to give me the last one, last piece of information. So in this case, we have, if you look down the bottom there, 32 people who passed the science, but didn't pass the math. Now, if we take those this information that we have there, we can also figure out well, how many people passed the math exam. Well, 41 plus 19, so that means 60 people passed the math exam. And if we add the 19 and the 32 that we originally got there, it means 51 people passed the science exam. So you'll actually get a lot of times where you'll hear this type of information say, we have 100 people and this many passed math, or this, one, this many people did this thing, this many people did that thing, and sometimes it doesn't add up to 100. That's because there's overlap in there. I mean, some people could have done both. 
And that's where the Venn diagram actually really comes into play. It helps you be able to visualize that information. Also could have Venn diagrams with three sets of information as here. In essence, it's the exact same thing. They just get a little bit more complicated. And this is just with three sets. You can have four or five. You can have a, a ton of circles on Venn diagrams. They don't have to just stop with two or three. However, when you start getting more and more of them, it becomes more complex to be able to make it and show those overlap pieces in there. So in this situation right here, you can see that the breakdown, you have roads, human, and vehicle. And you can actually see all the different arrows that go to the pieces. And the one down the middle is 3% of them was all three of them. 6% was the bottom two, 1% was the blue and the green. So you can see how the different um, circles overlap and the information can also occur there. So set one up, we got football, basketball, and baseball. So we got 24, those things. Then you got the football and the baseball, but not basketball, football and basketball, but not baseball, basketball and baseball, but not football, and then all three sports. So they've got all this information right here. We've got 110 high school athletes. Now, some people might say, oh, you got 110, it's got to add up to 110. If we look at these, this is not going to add up to 110 because there is those overlap pieces there. So if you look at this next Venn diagram right here with all the information, you can see how those numbers are represented. So if we look at this final thing here, once we've got the Venn diagram, we can actually ask a lot of other questions like how many didn't play any sports? How many people played two or three of the sports? How many people did just football? How many people played just basketball? Once we've got the information in that Venn diagram, you can ask a lot of questions. And the other nice thing is people can then look at that and get a lot more information about the numbers instead of just giving a list of values like you saw previously to this problem. Well, I hope you know, gives you a little bit better understanding of sets and Venn diagrams and how looking at it as a picture is going to be really a, a benefit to not only you who's trying to analyze the data, but to others who are trying to actually figure out what the heck you're talking about.